Welcome to Cambridge House Live. I'm Bridget Anderson at the World Resource Investment Conference and I am joined by Chris Powell, the Secretary and Treasurer at the Gold Antitrust Action Committee. It's nice to see you again, Chris. Oh, it's great to be here, Bridget. Let's start off talking about gold and uh, what happened in April. What do you think the situation is right now? I think the market's responding to uh, the most massive intervention in the gold market by central banks that uh, the planet has ever seen. There was more uh, paper gold, anyway, dumped on the market uh, on April 12th and April 15th that, uh, than, it, than it had ever been uh, dumped there. I think even people who have been skeptical of uh, complaints of market manipulation uh, were at a loss to explain where all that gold came from in, uh, in just a couple of trading sessions. Uh, I think uh, a lot of people now are coming over to uh, at least the general principle that the market is manipulated. Well, you know, and that's a, a good point because I think the drop or drops in April were such headline-grabbing moves that all of a sudden people are, are listening to what you have to say. So you're finding more support? Yeah, I think so. Uh, unfortunately, uh, uh, the, the, the support we're finding is within a sector that it's just had the stuffing kicked out of it. So uh, uh, it's uh, hard for us to uh, raise money because the, uh, the sector has been uh, pounded down uh, almost to, uh, to oblivion. Why do you think it is taking so long for your views to gain traction? Um, well, it's a couple of things, I think. Uh, first, nothing could be more politically incorrect than to say that we don't have free markets in the Western world. Uh, uh, secondly, it's uh, simply against government policy. The, uh, uh, the secret International Monetary Fund report that we uh, published in, uh, in January uh, showed that uh, the Western central banks conceal their gold swaps and leases uh, specifically uh, to facilitate their intervention in the currency and gold markets. That is a, a report that we have uh, posted on our internet site that, that the, the surreptitious intervention in the currency and gold markets is Western central bank policy. Uh, financial journalists uh, uh, really rely on, uh, on central bank uh, sources and I don't think they want to cross them. So what kind of evidence do you have? I mean, I, I know that you're talking about the report that you posted in January, but when, when you're speaking to people and it's coming down to they really want some hard evidence, what do you say well, to we, them? Well, we, we have uh, documented statements by a large number of central bankers, uh, four former chairman of uh, the Federal Reserve, the uh, former president of the Netherlands Central Bank, uh, Jelle Zilstra, who was simultaneously uh, president of the uh, Bank for International Settlements. Uh, all these central bankers have made at one time or another statements that uh, uh, to the effect that central banks rigged the gold price or at least contemplate uh, intervening against uh, against the gold price. There's, uh, there's a lot of literature on the subject. There's the uh, PowerPoint presentation that the Bank for International Settlements put together in uh, 2008, uh, advertising to prospective uh, BIS members. Uh, BIS services included uh, secret interventions in the gold market. Uh, this is a, a, a BIS PowerPoint presentation trying to get central banks to become members of the BIS because the BIS can provide gold market rigging services to them. So what is it going to take then to move this forward? I think it, uh, it will take a few things. Uh, first, uh, I think the uh, the Eastern world, uh, you know, Russia, China, uh, central banks in that vicinity are accumulating gold and at some point uh, they will be prepared to pull the plug on the scheme. Uh, they're not ready now. Uh, I think it will take some integrity in the uh, financial press, which we have not uh, uh, discovered yet. And uh, perhaps uh, most of all, it'll, it'll take uh, the courage of the gold mining industry to stand up for itself, which uh, we haven't found that either. And for you to continue on your, your work and your campaign, I imagine that you need financial support as well. So how are things in, in that way? Uh, we're doing okay today in the sense that we're you know, able to come to conferences and uh, do some traveling. Uh, I went to Hong Kong a few weeks ago and got on CNBC there. Was uh, that a big win for you to be able to get on one of the mainstream? Oh, absolutely. I mean, I just had to go to Hong Kong to do it. Um, I can't go to New York to do it. I can't go to you know Chicago to do it or Toronto with uh, BNN. They will not have us on. Uh, what we would like to do, uh, I think most of all, is raise half a million, a million dollars to undertake new freedom of information litigation against the Federal Reserve, the Treasury Department, and the State Department for more of their gold records. Uh, we, uh, we did sue the Fed a few years ago and 
and did extract uh, a, a couple of documents that were really very damaging to uh, the gold price uh, suppression scheme. Um, so future legal action is an option then? Oh if you've yeah, got absolutely. That We're entitled right now. Uh, we, we had uh, filed uh, requests with uh, those three agencies some months ago. Uh, they have not been complied with and under the law we are uh, entitled right now to bring uh, new lawsuits for new documents. Uh, uh, but we just got to raise the money to do it. And uh, that's, uh, that's very hard to do, uh, that kind of money. We've, We've approached uh, some very big people in the mining uh, industry, uh, people who made a lot of money in the mining industry, and they uh, uh, they will not give us the time of day. So it could take some time to raise this kind of money. Yes. You know, talking about legal action, a trial judge just last month ruled there was no evidence against J.P. Morgan in price manipulation. What was your reaction to that? Well, the, the judge, uh, I don't think he so much said there was no evidence. He just said that it... Uh, uh, what was what was presented was not adequate under the the standards of uh, class action law to to let the case continue. Uh, certainly, I was I was disappointed in it. On the other hand, I do think that the uh, the complaint, uh, the lawsuit, did bring out a lot of things that at least uh, raised questions that are still you know buzzing around. Uh, so I don't think it was a it, it was not a complete waste of time from our standpoint. We uh, from our standpoint, it did accomplish something. Uh, from the standpoint of the law firm that, uh, or the law firms that uh, undertook the case on speculation, I think they probably lost a lot of money on it. And does that hurt your credibility, or do you think that there is still room that you know you can go back to these law? Oh, firms? I, I, I think we've published so much documentation, Bridget, that uh, I don't really worry about our credibility anymore. I, I, I ask people who. Uh, doubt what we're saying simply to refer to the documentation and uh, I, I would not mind at all people uh, disputing the documentation mm -hmm. or saying we're misconstruing it or saying it's forgeries or something like that what I what I do mind is uh, you know people like Doug Casey the other day gave an interview who was saying that he'd, he'd never been shown any evidence of gold market manipulation I personally handed to Casey in New Orleans last November a stack of the documentation. I emailed him back in uh, January the secret IMF report and got an acknowledgement from him. And for him to say that he hasn't been shown anything is uh, that's that's uh, offensive to me. It'd be fine with me if he wanted to argue the documentation, tell me, oh, you're you're promoting forgeries or you're misconstruing it. That's fine. But to to say that. You haven't been shown anything, that's not true. And do you have documentation now that you're working on that investors can look forward to seeing? Oh, absolutely. Uh, the uh, documentation we've uh, posted over the years is uh, sequentially posted at our internet site at uh, gata.org, G-A-T-A dot org. Uh, if you go to the home page, you'll find a uh, documentation line in the uh, left column of the home page. Any of that you would categorize as the smoking gun, the big... Well, I, I think probably the, the, the most dramatic thing uh, we've uh, gotten is that secret IMF report from March 1999 that says that uh, Western Central Banks conceal their gold swaps and leases to facilitate surreptitious, in the, in surreptitious intervention in the gold and currency market. But I guess what I'm asking that, you know, to have something of that magnitude again, is it is it necessarily tied to getting more funding? Because that's... How you have, then you can uh, fuel not the necessarily. Uh, you, you know, we, we have researchers who look through uh, uh, official and unofficial government archives, and uh, you know, just uh, uh, a few weeks ago, we came upon uh, three uh, U.S. State Department cables from 1973 that uh, described how Western European central bankers, two years after gold had been officially demonetized and removed completely from the world's financial system. The Western European central bankers, according to the cables, were still trying to come up with some mechanism for rigging the gold price. So those are State Department documents. They're posted on our internet site. And we will keep an eye on your internet site to see what documents you've got in store for us. Thanks very much. Chris. Thank you, Bruce.